Okay. All right. I think the first thing that I'm going to do is go into preferences in Total Office Manager. We'll take a look at the preferences related to service agreements. We have allow duplicate service agreements. That just simply allows you to duplicate the service agreement number. Automatically add a service agreement discount. That automatically adds a discount to your work order. If they own a service agreement, that is, it'll automatically add the service agreement discount to that work order. And I'll talk more about that in a moment. You can disable the automatic service agreement numbering. I'm not sure why you would do that, but somebody needed that at some point, I'm sure. Otherwise, we wouldn't have added that. And then we have do not include vendors in the sold by selection. When you create a service agreement, you can select who sold that service agreement. And one option is to not only have your employees, but you could have your vendors in that list as well. And you might do that because you might have a 1099 employee. So they're technically not an employee. You pay them as a vendor and you might want to include them in that list. So that allows you to exclude or include the vendors in the sold by selection. So most companies would check that box not to include the vendors if you don't have any 1099 employees that would apply to that. Now, you might have noticed I skipped the escrow accounting option. What that allows you to do is recognize the income later on when you do the work. So rather than sell a service agreement today and recognize the income today, which is not a good idea, you'd want to recognize the income later when you actually do the work. And that feature allows for that. Now, when you turn that feature on, you'll have the option of selecting the accounts that are affected by the escrow accounting, that control the escrow accounting. I'll show you that. If we create a new item, one of our item types, as you probably know, is service agreement. And under the accounting tab, you will see that there is an escrow holding account and an escrow method. Those show up when that feature is turned on. Now, the first thing that the software wants to do is ask you, hey, where do you want to put this liability? If you sell a service agreement for $300, what this feature does is it creates a $300 liability. It's a liability because you were paid for work you haven't done. Now, when you do the work, that liability is reduced and that money is moved to income. But it wants to know where the escrow holding account is. That will show up on your balance sheet. If you run a balance sheet, let's run one real fast. When you use this feature under your liabilities, you'll see a new liability pop up, depending on what you've selected, and that liability will show up on the balance sheet. And that way you can keep track of service agreements that have been sold. And here we have reserve for service contracts. That service agreement sold, but you haven't done the work yet. All right. And then the escrow method, we have two methods of moving our money. We can match the movements to work orders, meaning when you have that work order, you create a work order and you do the work, then we move the money or we can create monthly movements. And that would simply take the dollar amount of the sale and divide it by the number of months in the term. So if you have a one year service agreement for $1,200, then what that does is it divides $1,200 $1, by 12 months and you would recognize $100 in income per month. So that's that option again match work orders 
or match movements to the work order, that means that when that work order comes due, like if the work order is dated today, then we move the money. Now, if you're interested in seeing the movements for that money, you can view all of that. If you go to the customer menu and go to your service agreement, actually, let's see, I picked the wrong place. Uh, let's see, I'm looking for the escrow movements. For some reason, I forgot where those were. You only see them if you have escrow turned on. Oh, well, let's see now. I might have confused it earlier. If you turned escrow off, it will turn those previous escrow movements just into standard journal entries. Right, and I didn't the escrow flag. I didn't turn it off, but I went to and then said no. So that's probably what happened. I probably hit it at that point. But you could see the escrow movements in a list, and you would be able to view the escrow movements so you have a good idea of how much money is moving and when. So we, we do recommend that you use the escrow feature because it's better accounting. Now, remember, how you file your taxes is a completely separate issue. This doesn't make any difference on how you file your taxes. You may say to yourself, well, we file our taxes on cash basis or accrual basis, so we can't or we would never or, or we would certainly want to. None of that matters. Your tax person doesn't care how you do this. For income tax purposes, it doesn't make any difference. They'll make the adjustments as needed for cash basis or accrual basis. Once you have your service agreements set up, you'll find them, of course, in your invoice items list. This is a list of anything that would show up on an invoice. I have a global filter over here for service agreements. If I click that, I can see my service agreements. Now, how does that filter work? You guys probably know this, but if we edit it, you can see how it was constructed. I gave it a name of service agreements. I made it global so everybody can see it. Field type equal to service agreement. So the field is the type of item and equal to service agreement. When I click on that, I'll see my service agreements. I think naming conventions are important. I mostly name mine SA or SEA. So you'll see we have an SEA service agreement. SEA, by the way, for me in my world stands for safety efficiency agreement, safety and efficiency agreement. It is residential. That's the R E S and three means that there are three visits. And I could add a 12, so everyone knows it's 12 months, or I could leave it blank if it was perpetual, if it just went on until canceled. You can see the number of visits is three, term in months is 12. This is 199.99. And I offer a 15% discount if you own a service agreement. And you probably do something like that too. You might offer 10%, 15%, 20%. I would offer 15% at a minimum. I would offer 25%, pardon me, I would offer 20% off as a maximum. But no matter what you do, be careful and make sure that you can afford the discount. So for example, if your service department doesn't have a 15% net profit, you can't afford to give 15% off repairs. And I hope that makes sense. So if you go out and do a $500 service call today and your company makes 10% net profit, that's $50. If you offer a 15% discount, then what happens? You're losing 5% on the service call. Now, how do you know what your net profit is? 
if you go to your financials, go to income statement overhead allocated, you can pick the residential, as an example, residential HVAC demand service, because that's what you're giving the discount on. You don't pick service agreement. You would pick demand service because that's the department that the 15% applies to. And then you could run that income statement. And you're going to want to look at the very last page, net profit. Where are you? There you are. You're going to want to look at your net profit. Yours will make more sense than this training database. But you're going to want to look at that net profit and you'll have to have 15% net profit or higher, or you can't afford to give a discount. Now, to do this correctly, what you would do is you would look at this income statement and you would add back your discounts. The discounts that you've given should show up on this income statement. You would add those back. So you're going to calculate your net profit before your current discounts. And you're going to want to make sure that you can afford a 15% discount. Now, I'll repeat that and move on because I do want to really make this point strongly. I've seen a lot of companies make this mistake. You really need to be about a 30% net profit company in demand service. Your demand service department should have about a 30% net profit so that when you give a 15% discount, you've still got a 15% net profit. The net profit in your demand service department should be the highest among all your departments because it's the most difficult department to operate. So just be sure you can afford the discounts. When you determine the discount, that's where it would go. And now you've created a service agreement that can be sold. So that's how you create the service agreement to sell it. You create a new item. You pick item type of service agreement. You give it a description, decide on the price, decide on the discounts. You pick your chart of accounts selections here. Now, if you give a commission to your technicians or anyone in your company to sell service agreements, you can add that commission amount right here. So you could type in an amount. Let's say you pay $20, put in 20. And when they sell the service agreement, that commission will end up on their paycheck. Now that's a little bit beyond the scope of today's conversation, but I'm willing to tackle that at the end for anybody that's interested in knowing more how that system works. So once the service agreement is set up, now we can sell it. And how do we do that? Well, we'll start with an invoice. And I'm going to click Add New. We're going to add a new customer. And we'll call this person Howard Johnson the second. And let's try to hit Save and Close and see what happens. Nothing happened. It took it. Some people tell me there's too many steps in the software. You have to add too much information to this software. It takes forever. Well, remember, you don't have to put in information into the software. You can put usually put in very little info. I wouldn't recommend it, but you don't have to put in a lot of information. When you add a customer, you just have to have a name. That's it. That's all you got to put in there. I would recommend a whole lot more than that. But remember, if there's a lot of steps, a lot of information that needs to be added, it may be that you're using that information in reports. And that's why it's being added. If you don't need the information, then don't add it. Just save yourself the effort. But typically, managers decide what information has to be added into what forms and that information is there for reporting purposes so that we can go back and analyze it all right so here we have a new customer i've got my diagnostic fee let's say we went out there and found 
the AC system wasn't operating. It was just dirty. And we said to them, look, it's, it would be much more cost effective for you to invest in a safety and efficiency agreement because on a regular basis, we come out to your home and we clean the unit and tune it in a very precise way. So we thoroughly clean it. We give it a precision tune up and we do everything that I'm doing today, but even better. So rather than pay me, notice my terminology. Now I said pay me. I didn't say invest. Rather than pay me to clean this unit today and just get it going, I would suggest that you invest in a safety and efficiency agreement. And what I'll do is I'll go ahead and make today's visit your first visit. And then we'll come back roughly in six months and come back roughly in six months. And then you can decide if you wish to renew it. You can cancel at any time. And then you tell them how much. And so whatever your company charges for that, you, you would say, well, your total investment is two sixty nine fifty two dollars or whatever that is. But it's really easy to sell it when you're converting a cleaning or a tune-up to a service agreement sale. Now, I'll add my service agreement. It's easy. SEA gets me to the right spot. Notice that the service items are highlighted. These are service agreements, and beneath each one is the discount that we established for the service agreement. The software creates the discount for you. You could use another discount if you wanted to, but the software creates the discount that people get when they own a safety and efficiency agreement. This person's not going to get the discount because they are investing in the safety efficiency agreement today. At least that's our story. That's our make-believe story for the webinar, right? So here we have an SEA Res 3. That's a three visit. Here's the real trick to this. And that price needs to go up, by the way. So I'm going to change that price right there. All right, so this is a three visit. Here's the trick. Normally, we sell two visit service agreements, but this, I'm, this time I'm selling a three visit. And I'm not mentioning to our client that there's an option. I simply sell them a three visit agreement. Here's why. Because I've already said to them, I will make today's visit your first visit. We'll pretend as if you already owned a safety and efficiency agreement. And we'll make it your first visit. And then we'll come back in roughly six months and come back in roughly six months. And the idea by the way, between you and I, is that we're going to come back at the end of the year when the agreement has expired, unless we sell one that's perpetual, that it goes on forever until canceled. Either way, I still would sell the three visit so that we can make today's visit the first one. What do we do after a year? They're converted to the two visit agreement. And as you might imagine, it's numbered SEA RES2. That is one of the best ways to sell service agreements. The mistake that we used to make when I first got started is we would sell a two visit and do it today, come back in roughly six months. Well, what happens for the next six months? We're not coming back out. We don't have a chance to renew it and we're not in their home for six full months. So sell the three visit. That's my recommendation. Now that we've got this sold, we could go ahead and hit save and close. And the software says you have to put in a department. Well, that is because a preference was set to demand a department. That's the only reason why the software is complaining is because it was set up that way by managers. So I'll pick a department. And in this case, the department is residential service agreement because we sold them a service agreement. Now it's offering to replace the department selection on my various line items. And I'll say, yeah, do it to all of them. And you'll notice each line item now has a department selection here. So what you could do, this is, a, this is kind of an advanced tip here. 
what you could do is you could say, well, you know, we were out there as part of demand service. They called and said, AC's down. And we went out there on a demand service call. We ended up selling a service agreement, though. So how can we recognize both? How do we avoid penalizing demand service? You could change this one line item over to demand service because the diagnostic fee is part of the demand service. And then you could have for the service agreement sale, the department of service agreement. And that way demand service gets their diagnostic fee and the service agreement revenue goes into the service agreement department. That's something to think about. All right, so let's hit save and close and see if it has anything else to complain about. It doesn't. It popped up a service agreement. It filled it out for us. And the only thing left to do is according to your company's policy, right? You could hit save and close right now because we don't care. I mean, Aptora doesn't care. The software doesn't care, but your company might have a policy that there's something that you need to do now. Like for example, I didn't pick the salesperson on the invoice, so it didn't carry over. And I might need to pick the person that gets credit for selling it. And I might need to pick the department that I want this to apply to. Service agreement there. And I might have to put in air filter sizes. Maybe that's your company's policy. So we got 25 by 25 by one, and this takes two of them, for example. And maybe they have a water panel, and it's a 440. So you decide on those things. You'll notice the term begins on the date it was created. You had the ability to change that. So you can backdate it, for example, so it starts Monday. And the term ends is always a year, so that changes for you. If you need to override the term ends, then you can do that. Check the little box and change the date. Why would you do that? Your company might say that these need to end on a certain set of date choices. Like for example, you might be willing to extend the service agreement out beyond a year so that it expires on the first day of the next month or the next quarter. And you might like to do that because it might make renewals easier. So for example, if all of your service agreements expired, say on June 1st, you might find that's easier. Or you might say that they expire on either June 1st or January 1st. You might find that that's easier to manage. And that's why that feature's there among other reasons. Now we haven't completed any services for the service agreement. That's why it says zero. And not completed, of course, is zero. We haven't done anything yet. Other, by the way, would be a work order that was created for this customer with this service agreement selected, but it wasn't part of the service agreement visits. So in other words, you went out there for some other reason, then it would show you one or two or whatever the number is in the other. Now completed, the not completed will populate only when we create work orders. And that's the next step is to click menu and click save, save our work. Now you'll notice there's a hyperlink that takes us to the invoice that sold it, which is handy. Just double click to open it. Going to go to menu. Now, if I were to close this, just hit save and close, it would ask me if I want to create work orders. And I do, I wanna create work orders. This is a new customer, so we don't have any equipment to select. There's no equipment to select. So what we wanna do now 
is we want to create our planned maintenance. Now, you don't have to do this, by the way. There's a lot of things in the software that you do not have to do. It just depends on what your company wants you to do. People often ask us, hey, what should I do? And that's consulting. That's really not tech support. It's not even training. If we get into should, what you should do, what would be recommended, that's really consulting. One thing I would say is you'd ask yourself, well, what did we do before software? So when we sold a service agreement before we bought Aptora's software, did we go ahead and schedule the visits tentatively? Did we enter a work order? Did we manually create one? Did we put something on the calendar tentatively? If you did, then you should do it here too. So you use the software to just do what you used to do manually. Let's click that. Now, what will happen is this form will open and we can pick the work order type such as preventative maintenance. Let's see what we have in here. Scheduled maintenance. Now, this is scheduled maintenance. What would be unscheduled maintenance? Unscheduled maintenance might be you have a maintenance call that was not scheduled. It was not part of a service agreement. And how would that happen? Maybe you advertised your so-called clean and checks. We would not want to call it that, by the way. I, I really hate that term because it sounds so unprofessional. But let's say we sold a clean and check. Well, that would be a precision tune-up. That's unscheduled. Now, by scheduled, we mean part of a service agreement. That's what I'm talking about. Because you might think, well, we still have to schedule it. You know, if they see our billboard and they call and they want that clean and check special, we still have to schedule it. But what I mean anyway, when I say scheduled maintenance is part of a maintenance agreement. Now, remember, that's up to you. You know, your company has its own decision to make on terminology and so forth. So what are we doing there? We're doing a, pre a precision tune-up and a professional cleaning. And I simply use that acronym because we all understand it. And I could assign it to a tech right now if I wanted to. Or I could leave that blank and we just do that later. And the department that it belongs to, well, if I'm doing precision tune-ups under a service agreement sale, then it belongs to the service agreement department. It got that information from here. Now, when I click the auto button, it's going to make two work orders for us. And one thing it doesn't do very well is it doesn't get the dates very close. Um, oftentimes it doesn't anyway. And you might have to change those or you might just leave them alone. You might say, I don't care if the dates are wrong. When those dates come, you know, we'll change them. But right now what it did is it created three work orders You'll see the escrow amount is right there, $90, $90, $89.99. The very last month always gets the rounding. So if there's a rounding issue, the last month gets the penny or loses the penny. So we have three visits. Remember, though, remember the story that I told, and that is we went out there and said, hey, we'll call this one your first tune-up. So what we would want to do is we would want to go ahead and create the work order. Yes, so leave that checked, but mark it as completed. That way, the software understands that we've already done one of our visits. One visit's already finished, and we have two left. And we're going to do that roughly on 8.11 and roughly on 12.11, but we can change that. And it might very well be Isabel, but it might not be. If we have no idea who it is, we could leave that blank, as I said. But there's no harm in putting it on the schedule in most cases. Now we're ready to hit OK. And it creates them. 
Would you like to automatically add a discount item to the work orders? What that's doing is it's offering to add that 15% discount to the work order. Now you might find that to be very handy. Then again, you may not, you may not like that idea. So you decide if you want to be asked and what the answer should be. I'll go ahead and say yes, and they're done. Now this form pops up giving us one last chance to edit these. So that way we can open one and edit that work order if we want to, like we could put in notes. This is the one that we did already. So we might say, uh, um, type that in. That way we all know why this was offered. And we'll click save and close to that. Close that. All right, so now back to the service agreement. It says we've completed one. We haven't completed two, so we have two more. And there are no other work orders under this service agreement. In other words, we, we have not created a work order for this customer and picked this service agreement on that work order. Now, how would you get an other? How would that be? Well, what if they call tomorrow and they say, it's making a strange noise and it never made that strange noise since you've been here. So what we would do is we would create a work order and we actually have a shortcut to do it right here. We create a work order and go out there and investigate the strange noise, but that's not a tune-up. That's not one of our tune-ups. So that's how it would become an other. Okay, hopefully that's all good, makes sense. Projected labor minutes, I didn't mention that. That came from the service agreement itself. That's how many labor minutes you think the service agreement will take. Uh, 60 minutes is probably a little low because that would include travel. For in my mind, it includes travel. In your mind, it may not. So you may decide 60 minutes is just fine. But me, I want travel included. So I'm going to up that to 90. And I can go fix that item so that it defaults to 90 next time. Let's go back to the menu, though, and just make sure that we've talked about this. Uh, select equipment, we saw that. We can make a copy. If this was expired, we could renew it, and it would create a renewal. I'll show you more of that in a minute. If I wanted to add notes to this service agreement, I could do that here. If I wanted to see the history of this service agreement, then I can click that button and we can see the history right there. If I go down to create, I've got shortcuts to create things like add equipment. And then finally, we have shortcuts to get into the customer related info, such as document links, where we might want to add a checklist of some kind. All right, save and close. Now, when we go to our customer list and we search for their name, and I'll just do last name. How did it find it? Remember I called him Howard Johnson II? So I just put in that, that found him. That was enough to find him. We'll open him up and it'll tell us, hey, there's a service agreement. He, he owns a service agreement. We know that now. And then from here, we have shortcuts to create work orders and do things, but you probably know that already. Now, what if we create an invoice for this person? We'll go find Howard. Oh, Johnson. I want to type in Johnson. There he is. Okay, so we found him. And if we were to create this invoice and save and close, it would tell us he owns a service agreement and you never gave him a discount. 
Are you sure you want to do that? So that's important. Now, by the way, it didn't pick the service agreement for us. So we picked the service agreement right there, but it would have known he has a service agreement. All the service agreements are listed here. You can see the status, when they begin, when they end, what the status is. And if we were to go back to the customer job, let's take a look at that real quick. Additional info. You can see that we have the ability to enter a default department so that it populates automatically. Sales rep. So you can put in those defaults if you would like to. But the invoice, uh, it will warn you that you haven't given them a discount. And that way you remind, you'll be reminded they have a service agreement discount coming. All right, so remember how those discounts work? Let's uh, go ahead and add an item. Let's say we're selling that thing. Now we want to put a discount on here. We'll type in SEA. Go down to SEA Res 3, and you can use that discount right there. You don't have to use that discount if you don't want to. You can actually use another discount, but the discounts are created automatically for you. Now, notice the discount is only $6.66. That doesn't seem right because this is about $100, $110, right? So what happened? Well, discounts only discount the item right above it. So what we want to do is put a cursor in there, right-click, do insert, and then we'll add a subtotal. Now the discount's correct. So we needed a subtotal. And that's it. That invoice has been created. I'll hit save and close. Oop, department. Remember, the department's a required field. Somebody made it that way. Now, how come it didn't just populate the department automatically? Because in the customer setup, I didn't add a department. Maybe I didn't want to. Maybe I want to make you pick it because who's to say it won't be demand service next time or something else? That's a decision for managers to make. And remember, it's wanting to populate the department selector on this on these line items. And there it is. All right, so that is ready to be saved and closed. And I'll close that too. Close that too. Let's go to customers service agreement list right there and look at our service agreement list. Here, as you probably know, you have a lot of columns available to you. You can add all these columns here, and you might want to add all these columns because you may want to market to these people. So you have the ability to add their full contact info, address, email, the date that it expires, how many visits are left, how many you've performed. You have a lot of info that you can add in here how many days until it expires and then you could put that into excel right click open list in excel put that into excel and then do a mail merge into word microsoft word or you could do a mail merge and send it through microsoft outlook or whatever you decide but that way you have marketing information that you might find handy Let's go find a service agreement. Usually you'll search service agreements by the customer name, I suppose, but I guess everybody's different. I have one in here that I, I remember the number on, 225. Um, I said I remembered it, AB. Yeah, I gave it a strange number so I could find it. All right, there it is. Let's open that up. So here we have an existing service agreement. Notice the status is pending. That's because the term begins, the start date has not yet arrived. So it's called pending. Now, if the term ends date has come and gone, it would be expired. And if today's date were somewhere in between, it would be active. And that's how it knows that these are active. 
you can see the invoice that it was sold on. I double click to get into that invoice. Right there. You'll notice also this is a renewal. So somebody renewed a service agreement. So we'll double click to open the original. And there's the original service agreement that got renewed. And there's two ways to renew these. You can click menu, click uh, renew SEA right here, and it'll ask you, are you sure? And then it'll create one for you. But chances are that's not what you want to do. You probably want to sell them another service agreement, which we're going to do in a moment. You'll probably want to sell them another service agreement and then it'll ask you, are you selling a new agreement or are you renewing an existing service agreement? Now, why would you ever use this feature? Let's say that you're playing catch up. You didn't use the software for the renewal and you're trying to get that information in the system. Then you might want to do it this way because it won't affect your financials. If you create an invoice, it could affect your financials if there was a dollar amount on the invoice. So you can decide which is best for you, but chances are once you're up and using the software, when you sell someone a new service agreement, you'll create an invoice. If you sell them a renewal, you'll create a new invoice. But when it's a renewal, the software will see that they've already owned one and it will ask you if it's a renewal. And we'll go into that in a second. I think we'll have plenty of time for that. So this was a renewal, this agreement here. And if you want to, you could go in here and look at your history and you would see the sale, the work orders, any escrow movements. So here's the escrow movements that occurred. That's the money moving around. And I guess that's about it. Pretty self-explanatory. Most of the things on here, I think we've we talked about all of them. You probably would never inactivate a service agreement, by the way, because once it expires, it's expired and you don't have to look at it anymore if you don't want to. Inactivating the service agreement you would do that only when you just don't want to see it never, ever again for whatever reason. Maybe it was entered by mistake and you don't want to delete it. You don't have permission to delete or you just think deleting is not a good idea. Maybe you didn't activate it. But typically, you don't inactivate a service agreement. You would just let it expire. Maybe they moved. And that means you'll no longer recognize a service agreement. Maybe they're not transferable. Maybe the person didn't pay. They never paid you. Yeah, that, then you might inactivate it. So you didn't get paid or they moved and yours are non-transferable for some reason. Then maybe you inactivate it. Otherwise, just let it expire. All right, so let's say we want to renew one by hand. Uh, let's go grab an expired agreement just so we can see that how that's done. I'll open one click menu, click renew, and this form pops up. Actually glad I did this because I forgot that this form will pop up. The reason why I forgot is because it came up because I have the escrow feature turned on. If I didn't have the escrow feature turned on, it would have just simply said, are you sure you want to renew this? Yes, I am. And it would have created another one and just put it right in front of me. But I have that feature turned on, so it, get, it can get a little more complicated. This batch renewal with escrow opens, and I wanted to talk about this anyway. What this allows you to do, in fact, we'll just start over. What this allows you to do is come in here and highlight a number of service agreements. Click this. Go down to batch renew service agreements with escrow and that form pops up and you'll notice it says renewing nine now nine are no longer selected so don't let that concern you it says renewing nine essays we pick a date put in some details these details if you hover over that it'll tell you 
This entry will populate the menu details field on the invoice. So it puts it in the invoice details area. And then you have some options here that if you're familiar with the software, this feature set, these are familiar to you. But since we're recording this, I'll go ahead and talk about these. If you're renewing a service agreement, it's going to use the same service agreement type. Remember the SEA Res 12, for example, 312. But you could change it. If you want to change the service agreement to another type, maybe you're you're renewing it to a two visit. Remember that? We sold these people a three visit, maybe we're renewing it to the two visit, then that's why that feature is helpful. And you have the opportunity to increase or decrease the price of the service agreement. You could do it as a percent or as a dollar amount. Now, what does it base that increase or decrease on? You have options there too. You could use the current service agreement retail price. So whatever you're currently charging or the new calculated price, whichever is greater. So let me show you that. Let's say that I want to raise prices of 10%. So I'm going to raise the price of what they paid by 10%. I have an option here to use the current retail price, what we charge now, or the 10% more, whichever is greater. Whichever is greater. Or I could say use their current retail price, use the current retail price of the item, the service agreement, or the new calculated price, whichever is less. So I'm going to look at the current price, add 10%, and I'm going to decide if I want whichever is greater or whichever is less. Now, if you don't check that box, it just renews it at the current price plus 10 percent. Now, once you renew these, you can open a service agreement report upon completion, and why not? That report will tell you what happened, how many got renewed, etc. You also can mark invoices to be printed, printed because this is actually going to create an invoice, and you can mark the invoices to be printed if you want to. You could also set the invoice to in progress, and that would allow you to more easily go review them. As you might know, invoices have an in progress feature. Here I am going into an invoice, click menu, in progress right there. What the in progress does is simply flags this invoice is not finished, it's in progress. What's it, what's it doing? What's it waiting on? That's up to you. It's just like putting a post-it note on an invoice that says in progress or draft or incomplete, pending review, whatever you decide. Another thing that it does, though, is it makes this invoice never appear late on your AR aging report. If you print your customer's AR aging report, this would never be late no matter how old it is. It's not late because it's in progress. In progress typically means we're not ready to send it to anybody. So you could come in here and you could create a filter for in progress. All of these are in progress and they could be reviewed prior to sending them out. And that gives you the option of marking them as in progress. You could also create planned work orders. If you wanted to go ahead and create the work orders for these renewals, you could do it. If you do, then you would come over here and you would fill in the options like you've seen before. So you'd go in here and create your work orders by filling in these options, preventative maintenance, et cetera. Give it a description, assign it if you want, department. copy commissions from previous invoice. So if you check this box and you notice that if I hover over it, it says the sales commission information from the existing invoice, if any, 
will be added to the new invoice. So what does that mean? Well, let's go look at that real quick. Let's open up an invoice, random invoice. Click menu, go to assign commissions. You'll notice there's a commission in here. This could have been a commission for selling a service agreement. So we can actually add this automatically to the new invoices. Why would you do that? Well, the question really comes down to, does the original person get a commission on the renewal? Will they get a commission on the renewal? If the answer is yes, they do, then you would use that feature. If the answer is no way, we're not going to give them a commission on the renewal. We only give a commission when they sell it or renew it personally, then you wouldn't use it. Use contact and sales tax information from what? You have two options. You can use the current customer's contact info and sales tax info. You notice we put in, this is the old way. That's how we always used to do it. Or you can look at the last invoice. So which is more current? If I want to create a new invoice, what's got the most current info? Would it be your customer form? Or would it be the last invoice? We had to make that an option because people are different. People disagree. All right, so that is all you have to do to renew a bunch of service agreements. Remember, I told you the best way to renew a service agreement is to create an invoice. Well, that's what this is doing. But these invoices may or may not be accepted. What you might be doing here is you might create the invoice and mail it out and hope they pay. Or you might be creating the invoice because they auto renew every year and you're going to hit their credit cards. So you have something that auto renews every year. You might be hitting their credit card. Or it's possible that it just auto renews monthly and you're hitting their credit card monthly. And in that case, you would not use this feature. You wouldn't need to because you would be creating a service agreement with a long expiration date. The term end date would be way into the future. This utility is used when you want to renew service agreements and generate an invoice. And then at that point, you'll either run credit cards or you'll mail the invoice or email the invoices. But that's really the unique part of this renewal feature is that it allows you to generate invoices for many, many, many service agreements. All right. Now, let's go create an invoice for somebody and sell them a renewal. I'm going to try to pick somebody here that I think has an expired one. Peter or Trevor, maybe. Let's see. Service agreement? No, he doesn't. So let's do ZNA. Service agreement? Yes. They got active and they have expired. So maybe I'll get lucky. Let me try one, one or two more here. Active, active. I promise I won't try forever. What I was looking for is somebody whose service agreement has expired and they do not have any others. Active, active, active. All right, well, we're settling for this guy. We're gonna sell him a service agreement. Pick this one. All right. And then they have one expired. Click it. We're going to put in uh, SEA and we're doing a commercial. So we'll sell them that one. And I'll hit save and close. We'll see what happens. So remember, for this, for this situation, what am I doing? I'm saying that we have this company with a service agreement, company, person, it doesn't matter. They have a service agreement. It's expired or is about to expire because it may not be expired yet. Maybe it's about to expire and we're renewing it in advance. Either way, they have one and we're selling them a renewal. The way you do that is you create an invoice and you add that item to the invoice. And maybe there's no diagnostic fee. We'll get rid of that to avoid that confusion. 
And then if we hit save and close, it'll say to us, ha, department's required. Think I wouldn't get burned on that one. Think I would have learned my lesson by now. So this is commercial HVAC and it's maintenance related. And we'll hit save. I could hit save and close. Ah, reimbursables. Ah, that's another story. No, I don't want to deal with those right now. All right, so here's what I was looking for. It says, you've sold a service agreement. You now need to do the paperwork. So basically, in the old days before software, we would fill out an invoice with a pen and probably carbonless paper, make three copies or whatever. And then we would fill out a service agreement form. Well, that's what you're doing here. You're basically getting ready to fill out a service agreement form. So I'll click OK to that. Now it gives me an option here. I can create a new service agreement. I can edit an existing service agreement. This is your decision. Tech support wouldn't answer a question like this. They would just explain what it's asking. This would be more consulting if you wanted to know our opinion, but you have two choices. Let's go back to the paper world. Do you want to go to the filing cabinet, pull out their existing service agreement? Do you want to cross out the end date and write in a new end date? And maybe write on there that it was extended due to invoice 78928 on 413 of 22. Or do you want to pull out a new form and fill out the new form from scratch? And that way you'll have the old form, which will expire. And you'll have the new form, which is the renewal. Which one do you want? Well, that's the question you ask yourself. Now, for me, I want to create a new form because that's what I would have done in the paper days. Most software questions have a paper answer. The answer is, well, how did you do it with paper? So I'm going to do new essay. And it's the same process you and I have already been through. So nothing's different. We would just go through this. We would add the work orders, et cetera, everything you've already seen. And that's how you would renew it. Now, right down there, right down here, it says this essay is a renewal. It doesn't know that this is a renewal. It could be that you sold them another service agreement, right? You could have sold them another one. Another one for what? Like in the case of a home, it could be that they had a second system and we're adding a second service agreement to cover the second system or a duplex and we're creating a service agreement for the other half of the duplex. So it's not really aware that this is a renewal because we came in through the invoice selling them a service agreement and we chose to create a new form, not extend an existing service agreement. So you'll want to check this box right here just to tell it it's a renewal. Now, what if you don't? It's not the end of the world, but it will help you analyze your renewal rate. So that's important, right? If you want to know your company's service agreement renewal rate, then you want to check that box. Now, if you had renewed it from the service agreement form, it would have checked it for you. But remember, we came in through an invoice and it doesn't know if it's a renewal or an extra service agreement. So check that box to call it a renewal. And now the software can give you more information about your company's renewal rate. If you are thinking, wow, we haven't been using that feature, you can always go back and find your service agreements. You can open them up and just check that box. And then the software will count up how many service agreements have expired, how many have been renewed, and tell you your renewal percentage. It'll know. All right, so it's not a big deal if you just go back and check those boxes later. Now, let's talk about marketing again. We said that we could create invoices. We could go to this list and right-click and open an Excel. 
Well, I wanted to remind you of something that a lot of people forget about, and that is under tools, we have the marketing list generator. And this is basically just a search utility, but it's really powerful. It allows you to search these different fields, most of which you know about already, but you could come in here and say, I want to search for active service agreements. Condition equal to uh, false. All right, so what does that do? That says, show me everybody that does not have a service agreement that's active. They could have one that's expired, they could have never bought one, but you're telling the software, I want a list of everyone that has an active service agreement, false. Could be true. And then you could pick another field and you could say also something else, like they have a sales lead or don't have a sales lead. So you can keep going with that criteria. Also, here you have an item list. This is your invoice item list. And you can go pick a service agreement. So you could pick this item and say that you want the list to also be of people that have not purchased this service agreement. And then you can click menu and run the query. And you have all your people. You can right click, do Excel. Or you could, if you wanted to, you could use, I would use Excel. I would export to Excel and then do a mail merge, email, Word, whatever. But what you could also do is you could set up a letter in here, like I have one already. I'll just do edit it so you can see it. All right, so I got the letter in there. And you've seen this before. This is how you create your custom invoices, custom work orders, custom data views, things like that. There I have my letter and it'll mail merge the information and I can put in more information than this. And I'll hit preview. And that's gonna be a little bit of time because there's nearly 200 it's merging. But notice that was pretty fast. So there's 294 pages and it merged the letter. So now, you know, I could create a PDF and mail it later, print it, mail it later. But that's your marketing list generator. There's good help topic on that, good videos on that as well. Let's take a look at mobile. Where are you, mobile? There it is. All right. Here I am in mobile. This is what you would see if you log in for the first time. Your screen might look a little different because it depends on your permissions and preferences and all that fun stuff. I'll click the hamburger menu, go to more. Under more, we have, it's got to wake up. It's been sitting a while. Under more, we have lots and lots of settings. Click settings and service agreements. So these are our service agreement related settings. Up here, copy settings to all users. So whatever we're about to do, do you wanna copy all of this to everybody? Yes or no? Do you wanna automatically add a service agreement discount when invoices are created, when work orders are created? And you might say, well, sure, who wouldn't? And if you do, if you do that, then it automatically adds the discount, but it puts the discount at the top of the work order. If you don't have anything in the items grid anyway, it puts it at the top, otherwise it puts it below whatever's in there already. But you, know, you might wanna add items above it and you might not like the fact that you have to remember to put things above it. So some people don't like that feature. They want to do it themselves, but that automatically adds the discount to the work order. And what do you call your service agreements? So in other words, we're going to offer an option of telling people, 
hey, if you owned our, and there's the name, if you owned our service agreement, you would have saved $85.62. But since everybody calls these things something different, we give you this field to give it a name. And you can only have one name. So if you have a plumbing department and it's different, electrical department that's different, you're going to have to just give it one name that's generic that fits all, like service agreement. And then you might have different discounts available. You have to pick one. You have to pick one. And you might put in 15%. Now, the reason why you will, can only pick one is we have a savings label feature. We show you what you will save with a service agreement in mobile. And we have to have one number and one name to look at. All right. So when you get that done, you can hit the Save button. And then let's take a look at what that means. Let's go to a work order. I don't have one there. Let's go to master list. And work orders. Double click on one. Hamburger menu. Now we're going to go down to the settings for the work order. And in settings, we're going to make sure that we have the savings label turned on. Go down here, and it's somewhere down here. Let's see. Include service agreement savings summary. Yes. Do you want to include the declined item option? Yes, et cetera. But that's the one I was looking for right there. I want to make sure that's turned on. And then that way, when we let's see if I have some items on here. I should add something to this. All right, let's add an item like that right there. Don't know what that is. Well, I do know what it is, but I didn't want to talk about it. I don't want to get into what it is, but I know what it is. And let's preview that. Okay, so what we have is the savings label right here. Your total investment is 390. Service agreement member, yes. Your savings, zero. What happened? Well, I never put the discount on there. I could have said that you get a discount, 15% discount, but I didn't put a discount on there. And it didn't automatically add it for me because it was already created. You'll notice, though, it says gold customer, one year includes two and a 10% discount. So that was trying to sell them a service agreement. Let's just go fix that up while we're at it. So uh, we'll delete that. We'll delete that. Let's add, add some items. We'll do a search here for Discount. And we got a lot of discounts in this database. Most companies will have probably fewer discounts, I would guess, because there's not too many discounts that you really need. But the point is, is when you add a discount, you want to pay attention to the position of that discount. So let me just Pick one here. Guess I don't have to be too picky, really. But I want to pay attention to the position. Last position or before. Well, in this case, I want it to be the last position right there. And then that way, it shows up below the price of the item. And in this case, I would pick one that needs to be edited. 
there was no default amount. All right, so I picked one, I picked a dollar amount. That was probably not the right one to pick, but you get the idea. That's how we would add the discount if we don't have the auto feature turned on. Now remember, it didn't add it because this was existing. And the feature was probably turned off when this was added or it was edited. But that'll add it for you. You just have to remember that when you put items on the work order, that you insert them at the beginning of the list. And you'll also want to add a subtotal. And that way the discount will come off, if it's a percentage anyway, it'll come off the subtotal. The feature, remember, the feature does that for you. It automatically adds that. Let's take a look at that, in fact. Um, let's do a quick add. Quick add what? Quick add what? A work order. Search for someone's name. See if I have someone in here. That'll work. Click add. Notice it says work order created with service agreement discount. So it put in the subtotal and it put in the service agreement discount. And then I'm going to add the diagnostic fee. So there's your diagnostic. I'll grab that one. And then maybe we had a uh, fan motor. Maybe it was half horse task. I'll just randomly pick that. Now, I've got two items selected to add, and the default is the last position. I don't want that. I want it to be before the subtotal. That's the part that people forget, and we get some complaints about that. That's all you have to do is just remember to put it in before the subtotal and click Add. By the way, when I click the Add button, I'm not sure if you're finished yet. That's why we don't leave this screen, because you might add something and then add something else. So we don't leave the screen. People ask that a lot. In this arrow, when you click it, we're really not sure where you want to go. So we go back to the main. I mean, we figure you're done with items, but maybe you're not. Enough people have said, take me back to the items tab that that change has been put in, and I think we're doing that. So here you are, you got the items, subtotal, the discount worked. And if we go to preview it, it should look good. So you'd say, well, Mr. Curtis, I have your situation figured out. I need to replace what we call your condensing unit fan motor. I'm going to replace the the motor run capacitor, as we call it, update the electrical. I'm going to mount the capacitor properly. The old one wasn't mounted properly. Anyway, I see that you own one of our safety and efficiency agreements. That's excellent because you are saving $56.22. So your total investment today is just $318.59. Notice I spell out $56.22 but I gloss over $318.59. I never say $318.59. If they don't own a service agreement, it would say no, and it would say missed savings, $56.22. So in that case, I would say, I see you don't own one of our safety and efficiency agreements. You would have saved $56.22. So your total investment today is $318.59. Now, if you don't bring it up, I'm going to say to you, have you ever thought about investing in one of our safety and efficiency agreements? Because if you do, I can pretend like you already owned it. I'll just add it to the invoice. I'll pretend like you had it the moment I rang your doorbell, and I'll go ahead and give you the $56.22 discount today. And then they're like, well, what, so what is that? What do you do? What's that mean? And then you tell them, then you add it and you make the sale. You could also add it and use the decline feature, so we all know that they declined it. And I would recommend that. I'd recommend the decline feature be used at all times. So that's how you would tell them how great it is that they owned one and how much they would save, but it's also how you would 
tell them they could have saved. And remember, if they did not have a service agreement, it would look just like this, except it would say no here, and it would say missed agreement savings. And if you capture a signature, if you capture a signature, then it would have saved, it would have said missed savings on that. So when they go to sign it, it says missed savings, again, reiterating that they missed out on the discount. It makes it pretty easy to sell those. A lot easier anyway. So that's how that feature works in mobile. And that pretty well does it for the things that I wanted to cover. Erica, did you have anything you wanted to add? Okay, Erica, here's my... there you go. No, I think you've got that covered. Okay. Were there any unanswered questions that I should cover? We didn't have any questions. No questions at all? Wow. Okay. That's a first, yeah. I think, isn't it? That is a first. Huh. Well, come on. You guys are either, you know everything there is to know, or you just didn't want to ask questions for some reason. Either way, that's all right. Well, that concludes our service agreement webinar. It was recorded. Give us a few days to get it out there. It does take us a few days to get it ready and put it out there on the internet for you, but we'll have that ready and we'll post a link in Aptora Pros so everybody can get it. Erica, thanks for the help today. Even though you had an easy day, thank you. Usually you work harder than I do. No, it was easy today. All right. Well, thank you, everybody, for being here, and I'll look forward to seeing you in the next webinar. Goodbye, everyone.